Hi. In this episode, we want to explore conditional form fields that can vary on, for instance, a text that is uh, uh, entered in a drop down box or in a text box. So, in this uh, case, we have a uh, type for uh, on our opportunity, and this can be the options for the type. And we want the uh, type to uh, change, uh, enter an, an some text when the type of the opportunity is set to new customer. So, in our document, we have obviously um, the type. Uh, this is the drop down box, and I will show you in a second. And then we have a text box where we say this is uh, some previous opportunity. So if the type, for instance, is uh, that you are uh, an existing customer, then okay, we would like to end that you enter some, some information there. Obviously, your CRM would have that, but we, uh, this is an, a demo that we put together. Okay, so uh, what we have done here is we have uh, created an uh, data source called a picklist translation that works on the opportunity and has the uh, the type picklist so this uh, we have imported into our uh, config, the config and next you have some config types as you can see over here so one config type uh, we have chosen for transients but if you want to update it in salesforce please then select the single for, for form fields uh, but we don't want to update it into salesforce for now we have selected our data source and our type obviously and we set here the control type to pick list and the pick list data source to the opportunity type so now that will generate a pick list in our form Next up, we have also created uh, a text box uh, on our form. As you can see over here, that's a single line input and a validation type text. So that is the one that is mapped to our merge fields uh, opportunity previous uh, by type. So as you can see back in the documents, that's this one over here. So when that is done, we have to, of course, now create our conditional form fields and that is uh, configured over here. So what we have done is uh, created an extra config, set it was a single condition on the field opportunity type. And if the, uh, this one equals the value new customer, then we are going to set the read only to uh, of the of the text box to true and the required to false. So in other words, we don't have to enter any data there. Next, we are also do the opposite because when it's different from new customer, then we want to set the read only um, to false so uh, that, it's, uh, that it can be entered some data and that the required is true so that you have to enter some data. Okay, with this configuration, that's actually all that is required. And now we can send it out for signing or use it in form butter, both uh, work in the same way. So in this case, I have uh, selected to uh, work in sign butler. And now when it's uh, sent out for signing, I can just go for the demo reason, uh, for demo purposes, I just click here. Otherwise you would have your customer signing of you, obviously. And when my form is uh, opening up, you already see that it has a drop down box with all of the values that was there. That's thanks to the translation pick list data source. So if I would select existing a customer upgrade, you already see that this box is now, um, is now, uh, um, uh, enabled. If I go back to new customer, the box is disabled. So let's go for a uh, new customer upgrade. If I try to sign my documents, uh, then it will do a validation and it will say that there is a validation error. This field is now mandatory. So uh, obviously, um, let me just quickly put in some data here. So uh, if I try again, you would see that it's still the validation error until I say, okay, this looks good. And now if I sign my documents, the validation is okay. And I can, turn, can continue in with the signing. Everything is done. So that's how you can set up conditional form fields with conditions on the, uh, uh, on text boxes or on text that's in a drop down box or a text box.